something? And I didn't work on it, but then you were fixing it. Where's my? Am I getting started right away? Yeah, what's that? The library of Congress. This is a fun button. Good morning, and welcome to Woodbridge, the best town around. It gives me great pleasure today to welcome Governor Phil Murphy back to Woodbridge to sign the 2022 budget today in this beautiful brand new school. Governor Murphy has been a regular visitor to our town, and he was actually at this very site a few years ago at the 110-year-old former Ross Street School to talk about school funding. The Woodbridge Board of Education has been the beneficiary of that revised funding formula, and we stand here now in a school that proves these benefits. We thank you, Governor, along with Senate President Steve Sweeney and my good friend, Assembly Speaker Craig Coughlin, for recognizing that school districts like Woodbridge were underfunded for years. I'm just a little bit jealous, though, that the 2022 budget process was completed so early. During my four years as State Treasurer, I think we went into July three times and all the way to July 3rd once, and we were frequent guests at the Trenton Marriott during budget times. Thanks to all of you for working together to avoid those hectic times this year. I am also extremely jealous of your surplus balances. Your fiscal conservatism gave you the opportunity to do what we were never, never able to accomplish by fully funding pension obligations and rebates and other areas that benefit the residents of the state of New Jersey. I would be remiss if I did not also thank Governor Murphy for the terrific cooperation Woodbridge has received from his front office staff and his cabinet officers. We have major projects going on in Woodbridge with more school construction, a major intersection upgrade at Route 9 and Main Street, brownfield cleanups, and a marina renovation project, among others. The departments of transportation, environmental protection, education, and community affairs have been terrific partners in all of these ventures. They not only return calls, they initiate calls. They not only attend meetings, they schedule meetings. They are easy to work with and always work to help us overcome obstacles to get things done. Just yesterday, in a very simple issue with a social affairs permit through the Division of Alcoholic Beverage Control under the Department of Law and Public Safety, an employee named Kelly Trollo went far out of her way to accommodate us to obtain a permit we needed by tonight. She is dealing with deluges of work getting licenses done by tomorrow, June 30th, and she still managed to help us get what we need. Her help is greatly appreciated and very indicative of what we get from Trenton these last several years. Governor, these relationships with your people have really made it easier for us to deal with state government, and we thank you for your leadership, which greatly benefits the township of Woodbridge. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce the great governor of the great state of New Jersey, Governor Phil Murphy. Thank you. Thank you all. Good morning, everybody. It is so good to be here. Mayor John McCormick, a, a friend for many, many years, thank you for your gracious words. Uh, especially toward our team and for your strong and principled leadership of this extraordinary, tremendous township. Mac, one more time to you. Thank you. It is really good to be back at Ross Street School 11 to give the people of New Jersey a new state budget that will continue the progress we have made over the past three plus years to protect property taxpayers, create opportunities for more residents to succeed, invest in our public schools and critical infrastructure, and restore New Jersey's fiscal integrity. As John and I were discussing privately just before coming in here, I was here at this school, I think in January of 2019, so two, two and a half years ago, but it looked a lot different then than it does now, uh, just as we were beginning our work of making up for years of disinvestment in our public schools to speak to that very point. Not just Woodbridge, but communities all across our state and especially here in Middlesex County are in a better place because of this. And I'm so proud to be back here to sign a budget that proves we've kept our word. This is a budget that pays our bills, it meets our obligations, and invests in a brighter future. This is a budget that builds a stronger, fairer New Jersey that works for every family. And most of all, this is a budget that moves our state forward. I am so pleased to be joined by some 
ex extraordinary leaders up here on stage with me and many in the audience before me, beginning with my partner in government, the one and only Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver. Our extraordinary state treasurer, Liz Moyle. Liz, to you and your team in the front row. Thank you. You've been front and center, Liz, in our efforts to build that stronger fiscal foundation for our state, and your team is with us, and thank you, folks. I'm also joined by extraordinary leaders in our legislature, beginning with Senate President Steve Sweeney. Woodbridge's own Speaker of the General Assembly, Craig Coughlin. And both budget chairs, also extraordinary leaders, Senator Paul Sarlo. And Assemblywoman Ileana Pinter Marin. And by the way, for those of you who may be watching on TV and you may not sense this, this gym is filled with extraordinary leaders, elected officials, brothers and sisters in organized labor. Let's hear for labor, folks. Labor is in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so many other leaders and friends. It's an honor to be with each and every one of you today. And again, we would not be here today without all everyone here has done across the last three and a half years. It's an off-repeated statement. A budget is not just a big book of numbers, which it is but it is a statement of values, and that's true of any budget. <clears throat> but this year in particular, it takes on a deeper meaning. After a year in which the pandemic disrupted practically every facet of our lives, a year we focused every day on saving lives, even though we have lost, it's unfathomable, over 26,000 members of our New Jersey family, a year in which so many of our state were knocked down but not out, New Jersey is now standing before the dawn of the new post-COVID day that is breaking. And this is the budget that will see to it that this day is better than yesterday. There is so much good that this budget invests in, but talking about everything would probably take me until past the state's constitutional deadline of midnight tomorrow, so forgive me for not doing so. So while I am proud of everything within this budget, allow me to highlight just a few things. First and foremost, this budget comes through with billions, billions of dollars in tax relief to make our state more affordable for millions of working and middle class families and seniors. If there is anything that sets our values apart, it is this. The prior administration and those who would reinstate their policies believed that the only way to prosperity was by cutting taxes for the wealthiest, which meant leaving everyone else behind and we are not going back to that. <clears throat> we, know, we know that New Jersey can only succeed when prosperity radiates from a strong middle class and from the hard work of those yearning to join the middle class. A budget must build from the middle out and from the bottom up. That's the vision and the simple fact that this budget supports. We are not just increasing the homestead property tax benefit for countless residents, although we are, but we are also ensuring that this release, uh, relief rather, is based on more accurate and more representative property tax information. It's no longer 2006, so let's stop using that as a baseline for relief. Moreover, tax relief to hundreds of thousands of middle-class families is going to start going out literally this week, and we're not going to delay. And I particularly thank the Senate President and the Speaker for their extraordinary partnership in this and in so much. We are making it so more residents can invest tax-free in their child's or grandchild's higher education future by exempting more of what they put away into a state-sponsored 529 savings account. This will help countless students afford a college education and lower the burden of and the need for student loans. We are increasing the threshold by which families, and especially those headed by working women, can qualify for and receive a credit against their income taxes for the costs of childcare or looking after an aging relative. And we are ensuring that every child in New Jersey, every child in New Jersey, has health care. 
We are lowering the age limit at which working residents with dreams of joining our middle class can benefit from the earned income tax credit. And we are raising the limit at which retirement income becomes taxable so more of our seniors can remain in their communities long into their golden years in the homes in which they made memories and closer to their families and friends. Secondly, this budget invests in ensuring broad and equitable educational opportunities for more of our residents. First and foremost, we are continuing our promise to move toward full and equitable funding of our public school funding formula with an additional $580 million. Now this is a <clears throat> now this is a strong additional investment in our classrooms, in our students, and in our educators. And, and, and I acknowledge Acting Commissioner right before us in the front row of, uh, of education, Dr. Angelica Allen McMillan, who's in the house. Angelica, thank you for everything you and your team does. We're also increasing, yeah. Are there any educators in the gym? <laughs> Just wondering. Right? I knew we had a few. We're also increasing funding for extraordinary special education by $100 million. <laughs> this, is a topic, this is a topic close to the Senate President's heart, and I thank him personally for that. But it is just as much all of this as an investment in making our communities more affordable. Because as we know, every dollar that the state puts in, in aid, is a dollar that does not have to come locally, paid for by local property taxpayers. Over our administration's first three plus years, we've logged three of the lowest, of the six lowest year over year increases in statewide average property taxes on record. And we are gunning to put a fourth year on our tally sheet and continuing the hard work in delivering results on an issue that other governors only gave lip service to. We are, we're increasing funding for higher education, tuition aid grants or TAG by $35 million. This is a game changing uh, program. And I am especially proud that this budget will extend the promise of our successful community college opportunity grant program to students moving on from our great community colleges to our four-year colleges and universities through the new Garden State Guarantee. The opportunity, yeah, please. I know it may appear that way, but I'm not fishing for applause. The opportunity for students to receive a bachelor's degree tuition-free will be nothing less than a game-changer for them and their future and our state's economic future. The Garden State Guarantee comes with a simple promise. If you work hard, we have your back. And thirdly, thirdly, this budget continues to pick up the cans that so many before it had just kicked further and further down the road. We are living up to our obligations today and not pushing them off at a higher cost and greater weight onto the shoulders of the next generation. We are setting aside $3.7 billion to either pay down long-term debt or avoid incurrence of new debt. But there is perhaps no better example of this new mindset than the simple fact that this budget is a first in a generation, 25 years to be precise, to make our full payment into the pension funds of our public workforce. After decades of skipped pension payments, cleverly called, by the way, for reasons I don't understand, as holidays, uh, I am proud that this is the administration where the shirking of our obligations has stopped. Now, let's not fool ourselves. There is still work to do to bring our pension systems back to full health, and that work will take more years of commitment and fiscal responsibility. But today is the day we stop looking up from the bottom of the deep hole that previous administrations had dug over 25 years. Today is the day we start filling this hole in for good. I could go on. Line by line, we are investing in our residents and our communities in both our today and even more importantly, 
in our tomorrow. To be sure, this is not a perfect budget. I'd be hard-pressed to find one anywhere, but this is a darn good budget. A budget, amen. A budget that invests in our middle class and working families, that supports both those building their families and careers and those who are living out a richly deserved retirement. It's a budget that puts a world-class education within reach for all while tackling our age-old property tax problem. It's a budget that ensures a stronger, fairer, and healthier future for the generations born and reared in the shadow of an unprecedented pandemic. This budget proves the skeptics and the naysayers wrong. They dug the hole we are now climbing out of. They said we could not be fiscally responsible while making our state a more fair and a more just place filled with opportunity. They thought small and only served the few. We collectively dreamed big and committed to an economy that works for every family. Their ways failed us and held us back. This budget lifts us all up and moves our state forward. I again thank my legislative partners, especially the Senate President and Speaker, and the budget chairs for working alongside us to ensure that this budget speaks not just to the people of New Jersey, but represents our shared values. And I will be proud to sign this budget in just a few minutes. But first, I want to ask some of these stars up here to say a few words. Please help me welcome, first up, to bat, my partner in government, the one, the only, the singular, Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank, oh, thank, oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much. I think uh, that warm welcome will get me through this warm day. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you, Governor Murphy and. Uh, of course, our Senate President, Steve Sweeney, our Speaker, Craig Coughlin, and we are in his backyard in Woodbridge. And uh, thank you for welcoming us here, uh, Mayor McCormick. And to our budget chairs, budget chair in the Assembly, Assemblywoman Ileana Pintor Marin, and to our veteran budget chair in the Senate, uh, Senator Paul Sarlo. Good to be here with you today. Um, you know, the bipartisan work uh, that has come to pass today in a year of a global pandemic and in advance of the July 1st deadline is remarkable. And I can tell you how remarkable it is. I spent close to 16 years in the New Jersey State Legislature. And I com commented to um, the Speaker and Senate President, I know you will attest to this, I told uh, the speaker, I missed the good old days when we were in Trenton on the 7th and the 8th and the 9th and uh, haggled all day long and ran around. This was extraordinary and remarkable that the leadership of the legislature together with Governor Murphy are able to deliver a budget before the statutory deadline. It is remarkable and to Treasurer Moya, who, because of the pandemic and how financing was, she had to prepare four budgets within a small period of time. And uh, we, we respect you and love you for that, Liz. And uh, as Governor uh, Murphy mentioned in his remarks, a budget is a, a reflection of our values and what we prioritize. And it takes an even deeper meaning this year. Uh, I am so proud to be a part of an administration that not only values dignity and respect for all people and for human life in the face of adversity, but also strives for the highest possible quality of life for every New Jerseyan no matter if you're north or south or east or west. You know, we are a small state, and I think we sometimes forget that. We are a state of nine million people, but our geography and topography 
make the various portions of the state so distinct. I know the Senate president often laments that we forget that there is a South Jersey. I'm a Northern New Jersey person. And one of the things that I made sure I did uh, as a legislative leader, I visited all 40 districts uh, of the um, state legislature. And I think it gives you a sense of what the needs of people are. I know you have noticed that Governor Murphy doesn't let any sand get under his feet. He too has traveled the length and breadth of New Jersey. He has engaged with almost every constituency imaginable in our state. And I think that this budget reflects the input and those things that have been brought to his attention by you. So thanks, Governor, for recognizing that. <laughs> Clearing up our debt and uh, you know, making that full pension payment, these are investments that will pay off in the long run for our state. But most importantly, the investment that we are making in education. The future of New Jersey is dependent upon our K-12 system, our county college system, and our four-year institutions turning out the best and the brightest who will take the torch and lead New Jersey further into this new millennium. This budget is extraordinary as it relates to the support of education. COVID-19 was something none of us expected. It hit many of us in different ways. But one thing is for sure, we have a commissioner of the Department of Health who along with the governor every single day worked tirelessly to protect us and to make certain that we rolled out an effective vaccination campaign. I think that people in our state are now beginning to feel comfortable. They're moving around. They're able to join with parents and grandparents, see children. And uh, let's make certain as we all begin to enjoy the summer that we remember we still have to maintain some of the protocols we've been taught over the past year. One of the things that uh, I have the um, honor and privilege of doing, I serve as the commissioner of the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs. Community Affairs touches everyone's life, no matter where you're from. We're viewed as the state's public housing authority, but most importantly, we also administer and, and are connected to the New Jersey Redevelopment Authority, the New Jersey Housing Mortgage Finance Agency, and we oversee codes and standards. And as I think about Miami and what people are enduring, I made a call this morning to our Director of Codes and Standards asking him to thank the men and women that work in that division for keeping all of us safe with the inspections that they conduct from one end of this state to the other. Uh, this year's budget, of course, uh, puts focus on housing and development. Much of the housing funded, funding that has been committed to the Department of Community Affairs and to the New Jersey Housing and Mortgage Finance Agency is going towards meeting immediate needs like rental assistance, eviction prevention, and, yes, <laughs> utility assistance and homelessness prevention. And I'm very pleased that we were informed by the federal government this week that New Jersey submitted the best homeless uh, homeowners assistance fund program in the nation. We submitted the best in the nation. Our application will be used as a template for other states. Under the HAP, 
the Homeowners Assistance Program, you know we've given attention to rental assistance, but we haven't forgotten homeowners either. We, we have not. And that program will allow us to provide mortgage assistance to homeowners who have gotten into arrears because of uh, income reductions during this COVID-19 pandemic. So we're very pleased that we're going to be able to do that. Um, eviction uh, coming upon us as these moratoriums have li are lifted has been a priority of Governor Murphy. And I think you'll see in the next several weeks, we're rolling out several programs that are going to be a lifeline for many people in this state. Uh, we're pleased that President Biden was able to work with the Congress to give us an American rescue plan because our small business owners in this state continue to need help lifting themselves up also. Uh, and you will see some very exciting and innovative things that we will be doing in Trenton to support our small businesses. Um, you know, all of these investments are paying dividends for us already. And uh, we know that the millions of working class families that are in our state are going to benefit from the thoughtful budget that has been developed. I have been able to watch um, the governor work with Senate President Sweeney and with Speaker Coughlin and with the two budget chairs. And they sit down at a table. There is great interaction. Everyone can put their issues on the table and they work it through. That is how government is supposed to work. Thank you, everybody. Let's hear it one more time. Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver. We would not be here without him. Please welcome another great leader, Senate President Steve Sweeney. Thank you. Thank you. This is uh, Mayor McCormick. It's uh, wonderful being here in Woodbridge, uh, the center of New Jersey's universe, as we know. Right, Speaker? Yes. Absolutely. And the Governor Murphy for putting a budget together that actually really truly shows the values of the state of New Jersey to its people. To the Lieutenant Governor for your partnership, Liz, dealing with us, which is not easy, I know that, to our two budget chairs, but especially my partner in the Assembly, Speaker Coughlin. Craig and I uh, got to be pretty good friends, I think. You know, we really didn't know each other that well, but there's arguments, there's disagreements, but there's a belief to move the state forward. Governor, you fulfilled a dream of mine. I know that's scary. <laughs> I know you got to be thinking, oh shit, <laughs> but we're making the full pension payment. And, and we're buying down the assumption rate, which for people that don't understand, that is so critical. At one point, we were at seven and three quarters, I think, on an assumption rate. To be at 7% is wonderful. I hope we can get it down even a little bit more in the future. But you know, the pension system, if we hadn't started funding it, would have went bankrupt. Now we're moving in the right direction, and it is an investment, it's not pork. That's an investment in people. You know, we're fixing higher education. We're raising a floor instead of raiding one school to another and creating all kinds of fights. This budget fixes a lot of problems that existed for years. You know, we would go into a budget and you're like, well, let's take something from Rutgers, or let's take something from Rowan. It's like, how about if we don't take from anyone and we just raise the floor up? You know something? That's a big thing. This budget, this budget, and this is very close and personal to me, is the first time we are living up to our obligation for extraordinary special education. First time. 
We're at, when we started, Governor, we were at 54% funding. We're now up to 85%. And hopefully in the next couple of years we can get to 100%. Because school districts shouldn't have the pressure of having to decide, oh my God, a disabled person moved in the neighborhood, there goes our budget. It's the state's obligation to look out for its people. So this budget does a whole lot of good to homestead rebate. You know, I love our critics when they yell pork. Because it really, I'm not going to curse again. It, but you can imagine what I'm thinking. Budgets have a lot of numbers in them. But they're people. Those numbers equate to people. When we're helping reentry programs, giving people a second chance, they're human beings. We're making investments. This is the first. Thank you. But the point is, we are finally at a place where we can make an investment, a real investment in our people. And getting our school funding straight now, because it was so screwed up for so many years, we're on a trajectory where we're fixing things. We didn't have this opportunity before. So, Governor, again, thank you for filling a lot of dreams with this budget. It is a game changer. It is helping people. It's not pork. Let me make it clear. It's people. Every one of those investments is in the people of this state of New Jersey, not anywhere else. So it's not like coming up with crazy programs. It's trying to help the people of this state. So again, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, everyone up here, my partner, the Speaker, we did some good work here. And we should be proud of it. You know, when someone says, well, what about this, what about that? Say, hey, what about us? Us, we together, is a hell of a lot better than you're on your own. So, Governor, thank you all. Let's hear it again. Senate President Steve Sweeney. <clears throat> so well said. I personally like the cursing, so I'll go on record. We're in his backyard. Another great leader. He may be without socks, but he's not without courage. And his first lady is here. Tish is with us in the house. Welcome, <laughs> Speaker of the General Assembly, Craig Coughlin. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I can assure you that while there are many line items in the budget, not one of them is dedicated to socks for the speaker. I can tell you that. Uh, thank you very much. I want to I, I especially thank my friend Steve Sweeney for recognizing that Central Jersey is the center of this great state. <laughs> and for traveling all the way up here today to be with us. Um, let, you, let me thank the mayor for his, his great leadership here in the township of Woodbridge. And, and we have so many great leaders from Middlesex County here that I, and I, I want to recognize them all. From our, our Woodbridge Municipal Council, we have Greg Ficarra and Kyle Anderson. From Middlesex County, we have the Commissioner Director Ron Rio, Santi Nara, and, and Charlie Kenny, and my dear friend and leader Kevin McCabe is also here. And of course, as the governor points out, um, the first lady of one stern place, Ford's New Jersey. Tish Coughlin is with us, who also happens to be the leader of the Democrats here in South Amboy, and my inspiration every day. It, this is also a reunion of sorts for the General Assembly. Sheila Oliver was the, uh, the, the uh, first speaker I served under, and I had the privilege of serving with Liz Moyo when she served in the Assembly. So it's a great day. We're in Woodbridge with a whole bunch of Assembly members. It doesn't get a lot better for me than, than this. Uh, but thank you all for coming out, because this is really an important and an exciting day uh, as, we, as the governor signs this budget, which does so much uh, to reflect the values of the state of New Jersey uh, and to our leadership uh, in, in, the, in the Assembly and in the Senate. Uh, when I look at the budget, I don't, I don't see really a lot of line items. What I see are life-changing impacts uh, on, for investments in communities and in their future. Uh, we put uh, money back in, in people's pockets, helping make New Jersey, trying to make New Jersey more affordable for the people who live and work here. Uh, we've worked hard to keep taxes uh, in check, ensuring that uh, the people who live and work in communities and pay property taxes all the time uh, can thrive. And we stood up and protected for those of the most vulnerable and who were the most uh, impacted uh, by the pandemic. 
at every turn, we had the people of New Jersey in our minds as we walked through that. And I want to especially thank uh, Governor Murphy and Steve Sweeney for their, Senator President Steve Sweeney, for their extraordinary leadership. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It was, it was a remarkable journey uh, to do something that was really important for the state of New Jersey. And there's an awful lot to like in this budget. Uh, you've, you've heard some of the things before, but the truth of the matter is, is there's as, as many things as we name, you can name even more. Uh, think about the, we've doubled the income eligibility for child and dependent tax credits. We've, re we've put $100 million into child care because I think we all recognize uh, we've committed to do that through the ARP. Because if we don't get child care figured out, we won't get people back to work and we won't get kids in school in September. And this is where they need to be. They need to be here in September. We've stuck up for senior citizens, increasing the homestead rebate. Uh, we've, this summer, 760,000 New Jerseyans will get a rebate check because of the work that we did last year when we passed the millionaire's tax to return something back to working middle class people. And something. We've created a fund to help reduce, uh, we've created a deduction to help people contribute to uh, 529 so their kids have the opportunity to go to college and to create a tax deduction for people who pay tuitions. And one of the things that has always been near and dear to me, and I see my friend Carlos over there for the, from the community food bank in, in Hillside, we have put $50 million into challenging food insecurity. You've, You've heard the Senate President and the, and the Governor talk about the fact that we've, we've fully funded the pension. The truth of the matter is we funded it with an additional $505 million, which will save us, I think the estimates are what, a, over a billion dollars over the next 30 years. It's that kind of leadership. And we've we faced the challenge uh, of, of doing the things that people thought we might not do, to pour things into new programs and to, uh, to spend money in a way that would create cliffs in the future. We've resisted that temptation. We put $3.7 billion in the defeasement fund to pay down debt and to avoid debt in the future. We made those contributions to the pension fund. And we did it by working together and by coming together, understanding that what is important for New Jersey is not just this budget, but the budget to come and the budget after that. It has been a wonderful and remarkable process going through this. Not always easy, and it started really, I believe, last year when we first delayed the implementation of the budget, and then went through and ignored, really ignored, the advice of the rating services who thought we might lose as much as $13 billion in revenue. We only, we, so what we did was instead of ripping the state apart and by trying to cut us back to uh, to avoid that $4.2 billion that we had to borrow. Uh, we didn't cut it. We didn't raise taxes to do it. We did it uh, by leveling it out, cutting a little, raising some taxes, and borrowing. And now we're positioned to move forward. And so today, as we stand here, we have the hope of, the, of, the, of a renewed, uh, vibrant economy, which is right around the corner. And we've, we're poised to take advantage of that. This budget goes a long way to making sure that when, when that recovery comes, New Jersey will be in the best place. We'll stand up for the people who need it the most. And we did it together. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for our colleagues. I especially want to thank the, my, the two budget chairs, Senator Sarlo uh, and my very dear friend, uh, Ileana Pinta Moran, for their great leadership and all the members who served on that committee. Thank you all again for coming. I appreciate it. Sorry. Thank you. Well, done. well done. Let's hear it again. Speaker Craig Coughlin. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, nice to see you back there. Uh, thank you for everything. Um, you, you know, it's j just to make a, a, a point here, um, you've got folks up here who have decades of accumulated experience, which helped us get the budget that we're signing today. I mean, John is not only a great mayor, he was the treasurer of this great state and had to face some incredible challenges. You know, uh, Paul, you've been on the budget committee for 20 years, 12 as chair. Steve, you've been around for decades. Uh, Craig, likewise. I say that affectionately, by the way. <laughs> uh, Craig, you know Craig, because he's your own. Sheila, not just Lieutenant Governor, former Speaker of the Assembly, the, the job, the great honor that Craig now holds. Liz, a former legislator and treasurer. Ileana, uh, the chair in the Assembly. I mean, this is an extraordinary lineup, and it's no wonder and no surprise that we got a budget 
that is extraordinary as the one that we're going to sign in a few minutes. With that, please help me welcome someone who represents her team today, does an extraordinary job, the treasurer of the great state of New Jersey, Liz Moyle. Oh, thanks, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Governor um, and Lieutenant Governor, for allowing me to join you here today. I, I want to also thank the mayor. Um, he was so helpful to me during the transition when we came in um, four years ago, and I want to thank him for that and his continued uh, uh, advice and leadership over the years. Um, also to the legislative leadership team of the Senate President and the Speaker the speaker who are, do an extraordinary job of leading their respective chambers, um, including uh, very wise decisions in the leadership of their two budget committees, two people who I have had a lot you know, of interaction with over the past few years, um, both Senator Sarlo and Assemblywoman Pinter Marin, um, smart, uh, efficient, fair and even-handed even during their committee hearings, just two great leaders. So I just want to um, thank them for their support and their interaction over the years. Um, and I'm really pleased to be here as we mark uh, the end of another fiscal year and cement a budget that in many ways represents new beginnings. Um, this budget presented us with an extraordinary and somewhat unprecedented opportunity to reimagine what we'd like our economy, our schools, our workplaces, and our communities to look like, thanks to the dramatic about face our economy has taken in recent months. As we emerge from the single greatest economic and public health crisis in memory, we've seized the opportunity to make historic investments across our state while keeping the commitment to fiscal responsibility. As many of you know, New Jersey faced a number of fiscal challenges when the governor first took office. And with each year, beginning with the governor's first proposed budget in March of 2018, we have made steady progress in addressing these challenges. Over the last four years, we've ramped up our pension payments, uh, bolstered our surplus, instituted reforms that yielded hundreds of millions of dollars in health benefit savings, and made unprecedented investments in education and in transportation. Today's budget builds upon that progress. In FY22, as you've heard, we'll be making another record pension payment, the first full contribution since 1996, and then some, as the speaker mentioned, an additional 500 million all totaled will, is estimated to save our state over $1.5 billion over the next 30 years and fulfills the governor's promise to the hardworking public employees of, his, of the state that he made when he took office. And it ends decades of kicking the pension can down the road, a practice which has cost our state billions and billions with a B of dollars. Our strong revenues have provided the opportunity to further improve our long-term fiscal health with the creation of the $3.7 billion debt defeasement and prevention fund. And you've heard a lot spoken about that, and uh, so I won't go into more detail, but that has been a, a, real, a real smart step um, in the future of this state and will position the state for future generations to be able to start bringing down our debt um, and making us fiscally stronger as we move forward. The budget that the governor is going to sign today also delivers real tax relief at a time when our residents need it most by, as you've heard, boosting the homestead uh, benefit, re re expanding the earned income tax credit and child and dependent care tax credit, expanding the veterans property tax deduction, providing tax rebates uh, for up to middle of $500 for middle class, tax, middle class families, and protecting more hard earned retirement dollars. There are no new tax hikes, only relief. Keeping in mind the enormous obstacles that we all recognize still face many businesses and schools as a result of the pandemic, this budget allocates federal stimulus money to relief for small businesses, childcare, schools, and level one trauma centers across the state. It will make college substantially more affordable for many more students and their families through a variety of new and expanded financial assistance programs. And to ensure that we emerge from the pandemic stronger than we went into it, 
This budget targets aid to communities and industries most impacted by the public health crisis in order to fuel future economic growth. I know this past year has not been easy for anyone on so many levels. And as we stand here today ready to implement a robust and responsible budget, we should not lose sight of all we've accomplished to get to this point. So I want to take the opportunity to, to thank all of the incredible hardworking staff at Treasury, some of whom are with us here today. We have Kathy Lynn, who our new head of the Office of Management and Budget in her first year at that position. Dini Ajmani, Jen Shortino, just representing a few of the many people in Treasury who have worked so hard um, round the clock, really, throughout this crisis and helped produce not one or two, but four budgets. Thank you. And I'm producing four budgets in one year is probably a statistic you are not jealous of, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm proud that in every plan, we never lost sight of our commitment to fiscal responsibility, to long-term economic vitality, and to the people of this state whose needs will far outlive the public health crisis. And that is a testament to our governor, our partners in the legislature, the lieutenant governor, and the dedicated staff across state government who worked tirelessly to produce a responsible and equitable budget. I'm looking forward to the brighter days that are surely ahead, and thank you again for all coming out today and letting me join you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Treasurer Liz Moyle. <laughs> Two quick comments. As they say in Jersey, not for nothing, but all women line up from Treasury here. Let's, let's uh, salute that. Lynn, you had a nice, easy first year on the job, too, which is great. Riddle Fino is somewhere on a, a beach laughing at us, probably. And secondly, this is a point Steve and, and Craig each made this point uh, in their own words, as did Liz. When people hear the word progressive, they don't associate the word responsible with that word. But we are proving them wrong. This is both proudly progressive and it is a very deeply responsible, fiscally responsible budget. And that's a particular point that I think we can all be proud of. With that, we're going to round out by hearing from two other extraordinary legislative leaders, uh, and in this case, each of them as chairs of their respective budget committees. And without their leadership, we don't get to today. From the Assembly, first up to bat, the Chairwoman, Ileana, Assemblywoman Ileana Pinter Marin. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so, Governor, there's also another point, too. We just do it better yeah, yeah, than men do. So I just wanted to make that clear. No disrespect. Um, so a as I was sitting here and I'm, I was looking around, um, you know, I always, I always bring up home life because I think it makes us, as legislators, uh, connect with people, right? Because they think that sometimes we're not real or we're busy doing all these glamorous things. No, so my walls look like this and like that. Um, I wish I probably would have had better storage, but um, I just want to say that, you know, this, this budget um, really talks about the values. And Senator President, you said it best when you're, when you're talking about it represents people. Um, we have extraordinary uh, gentlemen and women on this on this uh, uh, stage today. Um, you know, I have to first give uh, thanks to my uh, friend uh, Craig Coughlin, the speaker, because you know he put an uh, enormous amount of trust in me, and I hope that I never let you down um, as we continue moving forward together. To the Senate President, who's who's uh, very funny, as all of you probably know, um, and inc incredibly smart. Thank you for your leadership. Paul, um, uh, Paul, I love dealing with uh, with this, with uh, uh, Paul Sarlo because he's very real, he's very honest, and we like to exchange ideas. So, uh, Senator, I, I appreciate your friendship and your honesty. And to Governor Murphy, um, you've done an extraordinary job. So I think that sometimes you don't get enough credit for the work that you do. So I want to thank you, Mayor McCormack. It's always nice to be here. You're always welcoming, uh, um, so I feel at home when I do come to Woodbridge. But when we all started this in 2020, uh, Governor, you laid out your, your first budget, 
And then within a few uh, weeks, you know, we were headed for a shutdown. We had, we were losing income, we were losing um, receipts, and we had no idea what was gonna happen. Everyone always asked the question, if you had to do it all over again, would you give the authority to borrow? And I say, uh, absolutely. Because if we didn't borrow, we would have been probably in a worse situation. The one thing that this administration kept doing is that we kept the economy open, we kept people being serviced, we kept people being fed, we tried to keep as many people at work, and that was a big difference in this comeback and this uh, uh, recovery. And for that, I, I wanna thank Liz, because you were uh, amazing with your team in working with us and giving us the details of what it is that we had to look forward to or not so forward to. Um, but I really wanna thank your leadership on this, because a lot of people were telling us and knew that you were wrong, um, but you really stood your ground and you made all of us uh, be helpful and conscious of the decision that we made. So I wanna say, I wanna th say thank you to you today, Liz. Thank you. And I think that uh, uh, the Lieutenant Governor, Sheila Oliver, she, she is amazing to have someone of her expertise, uh, not only as being the former uh, speaker, which I had the privilege of coming in under, but also someone that you can just pick up the phone and a real person that understands government and how it works. Um, so I wanna say, Lieutenant Governor, thank you for, for all of your help. Um, I think if you look at the budget that we have here today, it represents people. It represents people from all of our districts that we, we have to go there to try and, and try to work for. It represents you know, our kids and what we need to, to do in order that there's food on the table, there's lights on, and at the end of the day, they have a home to live in. It represents those that need cancer treatment. It represents those that are in need of food and have somewhere to go. It represents workers that every day they're just trying to make a livable wage and come home and pay their bills. This budget, it's an expensive budget, but as I think all of us here have stated before, it's something that's important. It'll keep our economy going. It'll make investments for the long run to make sure that we have employment and that our seniors that are one of the most vulnerable are taken care of. So I think all of us here, we keep saying that we're very proud of, of the budget. I think this is the one year that all of us really came together. And not much was changed, Governor Murphy, from your original budget, by the way, which is really unprecedented. Um, because I think that the governor saw the way that we needed to go and needed to make the right decisions. So thank you. Thank you. Let's hear it, Assemblywoman Ileana Pitcher Marin. <clears throat> <clears throat> Before we bring up our last speaker, Dante, we're going to go right to sign on the bill after Senator Sarlo speaks. Um, listen, we, we, we put this event into this school with very little notice, and it's principal. I always do what the principal tells me to do. Tammy Giordano should stand up and take a bow. Thank you so much for everything you've done. It's an extraordinary school, and thank you for your leadership. I mentioned the varied backgrounds. One of the things when I referred to Paul Sarlo as having been on the budget committee for 20 years and chaired it for 12, I neglected to mention he's also a mayor. And that perspective, as John will, will attest to, brings a very unique and important and vital perspective into the budget process. Please help me welcome the chair of the Senate Budget Committee, Senator and Mayor Paul Sarlo. <laughs> Notice we're all standing. Thank you, uh, thank you, Governor, and you've heard all their names here multiple times. I'm not going to mention them again, but it just, it, for, it's an honor for me to share a small portion of the stage with these great leaders here. So thank you, all of you, for allowing me to share the stage with you here today. Um, yes, I am a mayor of a little town called Wood Ridge. Many people confuse it as Wood Bridge. Uh, we are an amazing little community in Bergen County, and you could pick us up and we would take a neighborhood here in Woodbridge. You could just drop us in and, and be a nice little neighborhood in Woodbridge. So it uh, brings a nice perspective to be a mayor uh, to the budget process. Uh, as you all know, I am a, a, a big time baseball guy, a coach, uh, and I always tell my kids, when you're batting ninth, well in this case I'm batting eighth today, uh, use it to be a double leadoff. Don't, don't, don't think you're batting eighth. So I'm gonna use this 
for the moment to uh, be a leadoff hitter here and just talk about what I <clears throat> see where we go from here. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and before I do that, on a personal perspective, as the governor said, 20 years uh, I've been on a budget committee, 12 years as chair. And from a personal perspective, there's many times I've gotten in my car and left that state house. Many times in the middle of the night, many times after being in the same suit for 48 hours, you get in that car and you're upset with yourself. Sometimes you're downright mad because you feel you didn't do your best. You feel that the budget that you passed was divisive or it didn't go far enough. Or sometimes you were forced to vote on things that you really didn't believe in. Uh, and that's happened time and time again over those 20 years. Not this time. When I got in the car and I left the State House, I actually left the State House, I went right to Northern Virginia for, to see my son play, I felt at ease. I felt relaxed and I felt satisfied that collectively we delivered. We delivered on a few different buckets and goals and I felt relieved that we did, what did right by the, the greater good and by the entire state of New Jersey. We weren't divisive. We included everybody and we made sure we planned for the future. And as, as I set out this process back in February, there was a couple things I wanted to make sure. Number one, is we pay down debt in the future. And we did that. We put a debt defeasance plan in place and we put money in a lockbox. Number two, I wanted to ensure that we made long-term strategic investments. Long-term strategic investments. And as the speaker said, not new programs that we could fund today and we can't fund tomorrow. Number three, I wanted to make sure that we prepare, it's a two to three year budget, prepare for that fiscal cliff, prepare for that inflation whether it's the rainy day fund or putting more money into budgets to ensure that at the end of the year there's perhaps some money to ensure there was a strong surplus. And fourth, and I want to thank the governor and the Senate president and the speaker for this, is to ensure that the legislature had a role going forward over the course of the next couple of years. As chairman of the Joint Budget Oversight Committee, we're going to have a role in how to make an investment uh, in this state with the American Rescue Plan dollars, some $5 billion that will be in a lockbox. So the four things that I wanted to set out in February all occurred, and I was pleased to get in the car that day and leave Trenton knowing that this legislature and this governor, for the first time in many, many years, did the right thing by the people of New Jersey. Thank you and God bless. That is the leadoff hitter. Let's hear it again for Chairman, Senator, Mayor Paul Sarlo. No need for more time on the clock. Let's sign the sucker. Let's go. Dante, how impressive. Down, down, down.